Today, we're gonna do a little challenge. I'm going to compose something in one minute, 10 minutes, and one hour. And the criteria is going to be using the circle of fifths. I'm going to use it to compose three piano exercises. Let's see how these time restraints affect the way I compose and how far I get with each one. I'll then show you how I practice my exercises and cycle them through different keys. My tips for transposition will be applicable to any instrument or musical phrases. This is a very popular and beautiful chord progression used by so many composers. You hear it a lot, especially in Baroque music. I'm playing this piece by Bach right now and it has this section. So it's basically a chord progression that has bass notes that follow the circle of fifths. So in motions of fifths or backwards in motions of fourths. All right, let's get started. I'm going to do all of this in A minor, so. These bass notes. Okay. I think I should have just improvised something because I was trying to compose something with scales. But I want something that can be repeatable. I was definitely trying to figure out which note to start on so that I can land on a third because it's a lot warmer and I didn't want to land on a fifth or an octave or just go straight down with a scale. I would add slopes, so I would go down the scale, go a step up, and then go down the scale again. I guess <laughs> that's it. Yeah, basic. Let's write that down. I think that's okay. It has to work through repetitions because I'm gonna cycle it through keys. All right, next, 10 minutes. Let's use the pencil. I generally like using pencil and paper when I'm writing because I can just take my time and I seem to commit to each idea because I have to write it down. I like that spacing. So something like that, even though it's a straightforward double arpeggio, I was really particular about the spacings. So I felt like 10 minutes wasn't quite enough. So this is where I came up with the pattern. I chose something that has a little bit of a lilt to it, a dotted rhythm feel. And I was experimenting with different placements of the left hand and different registers. You know, I think I should have kept the low chords. They actually sound better to me right now, but I went with the hand crossing, which is fun to play and fine. <laughs> Here, I don't think I was choosing anything new other than the placement of the last note. I was just rushing to write everything down so I don't forget it, because usually I do. Yeah, let's see what we have. Yeah, all right. Okay, now we have one hour. Let's just jump into it. Shall we have a coffee? <laughs> so I spent a few minutes just noodling around, trying to welcome in an idea. I didn't really have a focus yet. So here my pianist brain was kicking in and I was searching for a piano technique to work on, ideally something that I'm interested in and that I actually need to work on right now. I don't really like octaves, but maybe it's because I'm not very good at them. <laughs> now here's an idea I wish I kept, but I felt like it was way too early in the process, so I felt like I needed to move on. I have an idea. The top notes will follow that line. I'm starting first thinking about blocked chords that are descending, and from there, I'm going to flush it out into a pattern that has more direction. So instead of just going straight down, I am breaking it apart. I wanna add something there. Groups of five. <laughs> So now I am changing my mind. So even though the starting point is somewhat interesting, it becomes predictable once I play it chord after chord. So I'm adding one more note. Fourth. Tritone fourth. Third here. And in order to play that, I'm having to cross my index finger over my thumb. 
And here for a bit, I was working on direction. It took a really long time because I wasn't really being decisive and also everything just sounded too crowded. Like here are a bunch of notes going down and then here are a bunch of notes going up. Okay, so instead of going up to down and then down to up, I'm gonna go up to down and then repeat that up, down again. I was gonna get a little fancy, but we're just gonna follow this pattern. So here I was really struggling to find an ending. I wanted something to have the chord progression lighten up, but also make it so that it's natural to repeat the cycle. What have I been doing for the last 45 minutes? And then finally I decided on this solution. Maybe just that. That took a long time. But I think this works. Sometimes I try to overcomplicate things and be a little fancy, but okay. chords okay. is all it needs. We're just gonna go with. I feel like it didn't change much from when I first came up with the idea like 40 minutes ago, but that is fine. <laughs> take a break and when I come back I will turn this into an exercise. I want to take this moment to thank Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. I'm really happy to work with them because I think they're a perfect online platform to get you started learning a specific skill. So they have a ton of online classes from photography and illustration, music production, music theory, freelancing, and so much more. I just took a course that really helped regroup my life. It's called How to Organize Your Life and Work by Philippa Canelas. My last months have been quite chaotic. I have also relocated many times, as you can probably tell from my latest videos. So the tips I got from this course really helped make a huge difference in how I work, how I set up my life, my workspace, and how I organize everything physically and digitally. So on top of having all of the videos focused on on learning a skill, it's ad free. So there are no distractions while you're in the zone and there are new premium classes launched weekly. Plus now there's an entire catalog available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So I encourage you all to check it out. You have nothing to lose. Shall we play? So from here, how I would practice each one is to cycle them through different keys. The best way to do that, I think, will be to transpose each one down by fourths or up by fifths. So for example, we start in A minor, the next key would be E minor. So the last chord will become the first chord of the next key. The reason I transpose them is so that I can work on practicing these patterns in different keys. It not only helps with piano technique, but becomes a harmony exercise as well. You can apply these tips to any phrase you'd like to turn into an exercise. When you're transposing, take it slow. This is the spacing of the first chord. So just take each note and go down by fourth. A better way to do it, I think, is to take it chord by chord and pay attention to the spacing, the intervals, and how each note relates to the chord quality. So we have a seventh, a fifth in the right hand, a third here, and a fourth, an octave here. So now recreate that starting from A. Seventh, and usually once you have one of the notes, at least the first note, the rest sort of fall into place. And now here are demonstrations of my three exercises as transposed to the next keys.
So there you have it, the three exercises. I'll make the PDF available to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are interested in material like this related to the piano and composition, do subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time.